Okay, we're going. No, 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 no distractions. Don't need any extra distractions. <laughs> I usually do a funny bit before the start of my videos. Yeah. What do you want me to do while you do that? Do you want me to be not in the frame? <laughs> no, you <laughs> can do it. I was going to say, like, usually my. <laughs> Look, you haven't spent enough money this trip to Edinburgh to just dematerialise. <laughs> like, it's not that bad yet. I think I think Gary will still want you home, even if you I have spent so. half your mortgage on books. Yeah. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Leanne and welcome back to another video. Did I go into booktube voice? I think I did. <laughs> Too late in the day to be uh -huh. that enthusiastic about anything. <laughs> As you can see, I have a special guest. I always think it's funny when people from booktube like appear in my library with absolutely no warning because everybody in the comments is like, oh my god! <laughs> so I have kidnapped, sorry Gary, <laughs> I have kidnapped Victoria from what Victoria read. All links, of course, will be down below. Go support Victoria because we love her very much. <laughs> and we would like her to be able to come back here and stay with us for longer mm. and do more book damage, yeah? Well, it, yeah, we've done a fair amount of book damage mm. in one day. Mm. Yeah. Choices, choices were made. <laughs> many choices many, were made. Many choices. I have questions, but I want none of the answers. <laughs> this is your first like trip in a long time to Scotland. Yes. And we have done a tour of all of the bookshop. <laughs> um, some independent, some not so independent, but uh, our wallets are now petitioning for independence because yeah. some, some, that's bigger than my head. <laughs> I can't even listen to the whole stack. Ah, so I figured it's not actually been that long since we did um, a book haul here but that's okay because there's always room for book hauls on this channel so I figured that we would go through our stacks and uh, give you a little overview of what tickled our fancies um, it turns out that Jean did an entire vlog of the day that we were somehow yeah. oblivious <laughs> to during the entire thing it's really nice because it's nice to like see her clips but yeah I was not aware of her filming like no. most of that yes. so Victoria got slightly slightly more Books. Yes, because I had you and Jean egging me on. Because we went to a couple of bookshops before I started buying and both yes. of you were very concerned that I hadn't yet started yeah. that process. And I was like, don't worry, it, yeah. it will happen. And 14 books later. And that's only day one of two of bookshopping. Yes. So you got a special mystery book, didn't yes. you? Yes. And this is your first taste yeah. of a mystery book? Yeah. So we went into Golden Hair. Yes. Let's hold it so that the camera can actually see. <laughs> uh -huh, look, I know what I'm doing. Professional booktubers! What, you are? <laughs> so we went into Golden Hair Books and it was the last stop on our bookish tour. Yes. I'd already bought many books. And we had very sore feetsies. Very tired. Yeah. But it was a really beautiful bookshop. Yes. Um, so this is. one, I obviously haven't opened it yet, it says, Eerie short stories drawing on all things gothic, yes please. Yes. Horror, yes please. Yes. And folklore, yes please. Yes. By some of the finest BIPOC writers, also yes please. Ooh. May want to keep the lights on after reading it. Sounds like the kind of book that I would like. I'm usually a bit hesitant because I have so many books. Yes, and I've read so many course, books. Yeah. There's the risk that you, you'll have read it. Yes. But I definitely haven't read this kind of book before so let's see what it is let's do it exciting. oh and you're a ripper i love that you're a ripper that makes <laughs> my soul happy then people are like oh them. i'm not gonna mess about oh, oh my god <laughs> hold on wait 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 <laughs> ah oh my god i love this for I us i love that you literally just said that sounds like a book i want to read i love this solved. for us so this is when other people saw us they saw the dead edited by lauren t de Villier, which looks sounds really good the cover's cracking really you creepy. read the back and i'll hold up the front yeah. look the cover is well, like, beautiful the first bit i'm just gonna read the first bit of the yeah as well. it says a faceless man stalks a woman's nightmares in hollywood someone is summoned to seek revenge in a monastery move from the projects to manhattan leads to ominous shadows closing in two sisters discover a secret room in their farm unearthing a sinister power yes we need to read this soon i am this sounds awesome. very excited for that it's really funny <laughs> oh and we have a whole thing of content warning at the front Oh, yes. yes! And like which stories they're in as well. That's really good. Oh, I love that so That's much. That's very exciting. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so this is a, an interesting story. Sorry, I started reading. 
tell me that you're neurodiverse without <laughs> telling me that you're neurodiverse. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, these have an interesting story actually because um, there is a tiny, tiny little bookshop in Edinburgh called Transreal and it only does sci-fi and fantasy. And as soon as I walked in, I was like, oh, I've seen this. 15 different places and every time I go and I pick it up I'm just I'm just gonna buy it yep. I'm just gonna buy just it it's it. fine and I went up to the counter the normally not very chatty <laughs> bookseller in Transrail was like oh they've just they've done another one and we played a game of hot and cold because he absolutely <laughs> was not going to get it for me so we played a game of hot and cold on the shelf until I found it I didn't realise until we left yeah. that it was like a BIPOC anthology like I had read bits on the back how did we not put the two how things together? how weird is that? <laughs> I love that! Okay, so that's another buddy read. Yeah. But it's not the only buddy no, read in these stacks. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Victoria? No. Will we, will we tandem get this book? Yeah. Do we'll you have get it out of our <laughs> Jean like read the back, didn't she? And all three of us went, yes. <laughs> there was only like four of them and we were like, yeah, we'll take this. It's called uh, the Women in the Purple Skirt by Natsuko Imamura. So the Women in the Purple Skirt is being watched. Someone is following her, always perched just out of sight, monitoring which buses she takes, what she eats, whom she speaks to. But this invisible observer isn't a stalker. It's much more complicated than that. And what do you mean? Yeah. And it's been blurred Just by like mean. Leila Samani. Yeah, Sayaka Murata, yeah, who like, we stand on this channel, we know this. Yeah. Like I well, can Braithwaite's on the back. Yes. Like yeah. yeah, I also love that <laughs> as much as, you know, it's Paula Hawkins, so of course she's on anything thrillery or whatever, but I really like what she said, disquieting and mm. dryly funny. Like, can I have both of those things? Yeah. I like how we've got two buddy reads in this stack already. Also I like how I've told everybody about three books and you I have still got a uh, massive stack. Yes. But if we move on to one that you made Gina oh, and I yeah. both buy. Yeah, yeah. I, I've also in forced Wells. that into it your hands. It was shoved into both of our hands. Yeah. To be fair, I was happy to take it. Um, and it's The First Day of Spring by Nancy Tucker. And it says it only takes a second to end a life. Why don't you sell this one given that you sold it to okay. me? I'm quite happy to do that. But this one genuinely though, again, if you've watched any of my most recent videos, you'll probably have seen me talk about this. This one is on my top 10 books of the year so far and it's still at the top spot like okay. nothing has touched it and it is about a little girl who right at the very beginning like in the first couple of pages of the book kills another child mm -hmm. and it's one of those books that in the beginning you think it's a uh, there's something wrong with this creepy child narrative and we all know that I like an adult book with a creepy child from a creepy child's perspective but written for an adult audience however the further you go into the book, the more that you realise how incredibly misjudged yeah. you this whole narrative is. And that you've been put in the position of misjudging every character Everything. in this book, as has everybody else in her life. I might start this day. I've just literally opened like the first line is I killed a little boy today. It's so what good. But the thing is, is like as well as it just being like a a mind bending thriller it's also a meditation on mental health, okay. on poverty, on social housing yeah. crisis, like so many other things. And the writing is breathtaking. You know, there's there's functional thrillers, yeah. good thrillers, and then thrillers where you're like, and that it's just well, so good. Well, you clearly sold it to me. Also, yes. a blurb on the front, it's Paul Hawkins. And Lisa Jo. Yeah. We and trust Claire Lisa Joe as well. Yeah, we don't I quite like. Yeah. We, don't, we don't trust Claire McIntosh. But yeah. Would you like to tell us about another one? Because yes. Your your stack is still significantly larger than mine. Yeah. All right. Do you want to talk about the stack you've got over there to hold that we're not looking at right now? <gasps> Dropped oh. me right in that one. <laughs> wow. Just under the bus. <laughs> Book you made me do it. Okay. So, this is a book that I've been looking at on and off yes. since it came out. Yep. It's an incredibly popular. Um, Booktube. Booktube recently author. made me do it also. Yeah. So. <laughs> I've only read one from this author and I didn't like it. Okay. I was bored. Fair. But I think it might, I think this is more my genre. Yeah. So the book is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. See, I picked this one up because there's some dark academia that I have enjoyed. Yes. Like Catherine House. Oh, yes. Loved that book. Hated that book. 
well, I don't know why we're like, <laughs> friends. Like, our taste is so opposite. Like, but you did like uh, Madam. Madam, I love that by so, Phoebe. When? Thank, thank you. Yeah, we um, got there together. <laughs> <Team work. laughs> yeah. um, and this again was your influence because I said oh, I keep looking at it and you're like, well, if you keep looking at it, then pick it up. And it was in the Black Horse 3 for 2. So, yes. Here we are. So, I've yes. got ninth house. It's going to test my knowledge. It's about a girl who comes back to, I think it's set in like a quasi Oxford, mm. who comes back to university oh, after Yale. like, oh, Yale. Okay, mm. there you go. Who comes back to university after time away from it and kind of as what she has to do to stay at university she has to monitor the secret societies okay. she stays in like a, a magical apartment that's in the very like oh. first couple of pages because that's what drew me in so i've read from lee Rodrigo before and i actually really enjoyed it like yeah. not like not evangelical the way that you know some people are for lee Rodrigo's writing yeah but i really enjoyed it this is a really good first line by the time <laughs> This is, shows you a bit of an insight into my brain. By the time Alex managed to get the blood out, out of her good wool coat, it was too warm to wear it. I'm in. Yep. So, yeah. Sold. We're going to give this a go at some point. Like, probably, <laughs> like, probably September, October. Yes. I feel like would be the time for this, but... I spotted... I did not know that this existed. I thought that the first tiny, tiny book was a standalone thing. Uh, this is... It's, wasn't from Lighthouse. That's just a <laughs> random bookmark. This, which um, is the sister to this one, which I have forgotten the name of, but it's up there. An elderly lady is up to no good. Is like uh, it's technically short stories, but it's not really. It's an interconnected uh, story all about an old woman who lives in an apartment block where she has lived her entire life, and she does not like people. Thank you very much. And she does yep. not want people, and she does not want anybody. <laughs> Nothing broke, it's fine. We'll find out what it was later. <laughs> she does not want any people, she does not want new neighbours, she does not want anything. And then some people in the apartment block start to be very annoying. Oh. And so she decides to fix that. And that's all I'll say. So I'm not actually sure. I, I don't care. I don't wish to be spoiled for what yeah. she does in this second set. Um, but it's Sometimes like... Sometimes you just need to just pick it up and just... Yes, but the little tagline on the back says... Don't let her age fool you. Maud may be nearly 90, but if you cross her, this elderly lady is more sinister than sweet. So, we're now into literary fiction. Yes, okay. I think. This is like historical literary fiction. Okay. So this is one I wanted. I didn't see you pick this up, I don't think. Oh, uh, this I think was in Blackwell as well. And this was a book I didn't even know was out in paperback yet. Because oh. I kept looking at it, but the hardback's um, quite expensive. Yes. Mm. This is Cecily. That's really pretty. It's very pretty. Um, by Annie Garthwaite. Um, and it's just historical fiction about Cecily and it's basically set before the War of the Roses like she oh, was like okay. one of the main like movers and shakers okay and she's always portrayed in history as this awful like power hungry yes grasping woman yeah. and this is written I think from her perspective says it will take all of Cecily's courage and cunning to save her family when the will to have survived becomes ambition for the crown will she risk treason to secure it this is war as women fight it and it's, it's oh, kind of looking at like this is war as women, women would do it yeah. almost tipped me over the edge like because I must admit like that's not generally so anything I would say before 1700 there's mm. a very slim chance of me picking up okay. unless it's been like specifically recommended to me yeah but that that could have got like you know got and me I interested. love like Tudor history and this is pretty obviously like so pretty it's a feminist retelling of the Wars of the Roses and it's so pretty so on the subject of signed books, yes, yes, I said to Victoria, <laughs> if I see this book signed, I am buying it. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's so pretty. It's beautiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So this is the house with the golden door, which is the sequel to the Wolf Den, which looks like this, um, which is also just a stunningly gorgeous cover. I feel like. And we had a discussion about this while we were out as well. I feel like they've really pulled out the, the stop with classics covers yeah. recently. Because it's had such like a surge in being popular, they can just be like anything which is a classic or a myth retelling or a yeah. fairy tale retelling. They're like... Shiny. It's worth... Yeah, yeah, shiny. And it's worth putting the money behind mm. it, right? But I may have already bought this Do you book. Want to get it? Mm -mm. <laughs> so I pre-ordered a signed edition from Waterstones, yeah. which is... 
I mean, uh, coming in another whole video. Uh, coming, so. <laughs> yeah, it may not be. It may be. Um, <laughs> however, I spotted because I follow a lot of indie um, Edinburgh bookstores on Instagram, and I spotted that Elodie Harper had been in a few different bookshops, but specifically Rare Birds, and she had not only signed her name, but she had also doodled and drawn in a lot of the frontispieces of these books and when I walked into Rare Birds I literally dumped my candle and yeah. everything else on like, Victoria oh, okay. and I was like I have to look at the books <laughs> and I found one and I just yeah so I I have this now and I'm not sad about it no. um and the, um, the other signed copy is going to live with Jean. <laughs> so that will add to Jean's book haul. So, following on from you rehoming a book with Jean, because you bought two copies, <laughs> and needed to okay. it. Okay, alright. Well, <laughs> dropping it in. I've obviously been in Leanne's library for a couple of days now, like, looking at all the books and stuff, and I was admiring the sprayed edges on this, at which point Leanne said, oh, if you want it, take it. And I was like, ah, yes, please. <laughs> And it's this oh. one. It's Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. And yeah. I've read... What's Caramel. The song? Yeah, I've read the Caramel, Caramel series. Trilogy, I think. Yeah, trilogy. And enjoyed them. Yes. It's not generally my genre, but like sometimes. Yeah. A little bit of, yeah. you know, YA fantasy. I yes. don't even really know much about what this is about. Um, um, as far as I... All I know about it is it's about queer knights in a fantasy setting. Yeah, that's kind so, of all I knew. And, and it, it has tiny cute little foxes on it. I mean, the hey. whole thing is stunning. If you want to talk about stunning covers, like, yeah. it's so beautiful. It's pretty. And then we've got the spreadges, which is a word that Leanne hates. I hate it as well, to be fair. But the sprayed edges are beautiful. I mean, first of all, you've got... Oh, I'll show you that in a second. But you've got these end pages... Yeah, I think oh so. God. And then the naked cover. You're struggling with that. I know. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not smooth enough to do this. Um, the naked cover is stunning. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, oh, even the back's pretty. Yeah, the yeah. back the back is pretty. We've got yeah. end pages. I think at the back. There. Yeah, look. Ooh. Yeah, you got to take your hat off to Fairy Loot. I mean, when they, they do a book, they do a book. They know how to do an edition. And yes. then even the inside of the cover. Oh, look, she's all smiley. She's so sweet. Oh, I know. It's oh, nice, it's nice, I love nice her photos. So too. Oh, that way. Like, look how beautiful that is. Yeah, it's great. Get it out of my library. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. So coming home with me. <laughs> One way I like to bookshop without adding to my TBR <laughs> is to buy nicer editions of books I already own. Yeah. Because you still get the book. Yes. But you're not adding. Yes. So, you know. No um, pressure. And I saw these editions because these are two of my favourite classics of all time. Yes. And they always have really hideous covers. They're always yeah, really ugly. I have uh I don't really know what they do with classic editions. Do you know what I mean? When you when it's out of copyright yeah. and you can literally do anything yeah, you want with it, like. why have you done that? Yeah. Um, but these two we're buying we get them free. Um and we've got the Turn of the Screw by Henry James and uh, the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. They're beautiful. And they're just really nice editions. I love that. I didn't notice the little skulls in this one. Yeah, really Shall I also show really the pretty. ones that I oh, got as well? Got. Yeah. Yeah. So they're all of, in the Alma Classics. Yeah, I don't know if Jean got any, but we, we definitely, we walked in and we went, oh, <laughs> <Those>. <laughs> with that exact face, like, <laughs> The Women in White by Wilkie Collins, which I nearly just brained you yeah. with. That's that a, nearly took me out. This is a deceptively <laughs> heavy book. What are the backs of those ones? Oh, the backs have yeah, the the got the same one. Yeah. yeah. Even the backs. They're are so cute. cute. Also, I have never seen this on an in an edition on its own. It's uh, always yeah. with other short stories that I don't care about, or it's in academic editions, which are ridiculously expensive. And it's The Awakening by Kate Chopin. Have you read no. this? Oh, right, so I studied this at university, as as I studied this one, I did actually. That at university. Um, and it turned you off from I, this yes. one, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so essentially, this is um, a one of the first, like, very, very overt, this is what it was for, okay. works of feminism. And it's about Edna Pontelli, who has a, it sounds like the start of every bad domestic thriller, has a perfect marriage, uh -huh. she has children, and I can't remember when this is, I guess, late 1800s. Okay. Um, but she has, yeah, she, so she has everything that she's ever wanted. And it's really clever because it starts in a very hazy way where it almost feels a little bit fever dreamy. Okay. But then as Edna realises she wants other things in her life, she starts to come out of the fever dream and the okay. author brings you with it. Yeah. And she goes and gets her own life and stuff. 
and then something happens oh. and the cover is very if you know you know <laughs> uh but oh it's just so good it's so good i mm. feel like you would devour it and, okay. and become like a I'm stan okay. <laughs> i will add i think we need to add to my tbr just now but i will add that to my mental list i mean we can go back to blackwells tomorrow no 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 my bank account i can already hear it screaming <laughs> yes so this is another mm. one i didn't know without a paperback yeah so many people have been recommending this like people mm. who's opinions I trust yep. especially with literary fiction mm -hmm. um, and that's The Great Circle by Ma Maggie Shipstead but I didn't know this was out of paperback until yesterday when we mm -hmm. saw it did um, you just try and take yourself over yeah, that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what we're doing <laughs> um, and basically you've got dual narrative so you've got mm. um, where are we so Prohibition America yep um, and we've got Marion who wants to be a pilot and she takes off on a circumnavigate the globe Ooh, trip no pole thank to pole, you. I think nope. she does. And then we're skipping forward like over fifty years later, and we've got the actress who's playing her Ooh. in the film, Ooh. and we're following both women, I think. Um, and it was just sounds really interesting. Basically, just, I don't know why I can't convince you with those vibes to buy bad heroines because that is exactly the same thing. It's like creepy, weird, nasty yeah. things happen at a girls' school. Years later, a film crew come back to the girls' school actress playing one of the creepy weird girls at the girls school finds out stuff oh, like got a map. what <laughs> <laughs> but like opening line just because this yep, is a really good one it. so this is in march 1950 i was born to be a wanderer i was shaped to the earth like a seabird to a wave some birds fly until they die i have made a promise to myself my last ascent won't be in the tumbling helplessness helpless kind but a sharp gannet plunge a dive with intent aimed at something deep in the sea that was a really good. Oh, that's such a ooh, good opening. Ooh. I'm in. That gave me chills. Yeah, and I feel like this is gonna be one that if I really like it, I'll end up buying the hardback. Yeah, that's another. That's one of my toxic. <laughs> that's book another tricks. one of your bad habits. Okay, so we've got two to talk yes. about together because they are random, like non-fiction yeah. areas of interest. <laughs> yeah, Victoria's <laughs> niche special interest. Yeah. My for not for non-fiction, I read a lot of like historic. Yes. Non-fiction, yeah. like the Five, yes, by Holly Reinhold, like all of that Which kind of we stuff. Love. First one is Roaring Girls, um, by Holly Kite, and I literally just picked it up because the, I was intrigued by the cover. Yes, it says on the back, it tells the story of eight daring trailblazers who redefined what it meant to be a woman in pre-twentieth century Britain. From a cross-dressing thief to a rebel slave, these, form Ooh. these formidable women refused to play by the rules, and in doing so, helped sow the seeds of modern feminism. And I was like, yes, and then. You had, had a little cross-dressing thief. Yeah. yeah, and then I opened up the first line and it says, Girls we're told are not supposed to roar. We're supposed to shut up, be quiet, stop nagging. We're supposed to calm down, dear. If mm. we don't, we're bossy, we're aggressive, we're nasty, we're bloody difficult. We're a bunch of loud-mouthed feminazis and hysterical drama queens. If our skirts are too short, we're asking for it. But if we don't make an effort, we should be ashamed. If we don't speak out, um, how can we expect recognition? But if we do speak out, we get trolled. And that's in the 21st century, after four waves of feminism, when equality has supposedly been won. And then it kind of goes on from there about, like, how, you know, uh, what you do. I may and, like to purchase that tomorrow. About, the first woman it's talking about is Mary Frith, was just such a woman. A notorious cross-dressing thief in Jacobean London. She was smashing up every role in the book when she swaggered onto the stage of the Fortune Theatre in the spring of 1611, dressed in a doublet and a pair of hose sword in one hand, clay pipe in the other, to perform in the closing number of the play that she had inspired. It was called The Roaring Girl, so that's where she's taken the title from. Okay. Sounds so good. I, I'm going to need to, hold on, <laughs> let me take a picture and a front cut, I'll take it with my baby Victoria and then the picture. Oh my god, you're so cute. Uh, this will be what I refer to tomorrow when I purchase that book. And... I just saw it and I was saying to you, wasn't I? I, was like, I was like, oh, there's the one, something about like sexual history. Sarah and got me And you were like, <laughs> yes. the curious history of sex. I was like, yes. And we yes. found it by Kate Lister. And again, like this is just going to be so good. So good. And I so think good. I read, did I read the dedication? And I was like, yes. yes. <laughs> I didn't even read. Yeah. Yes. All it says is, it's for my family. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. Sold. I just think both of these are going to be a yeah. good time. I and I'm that. excited for this one. Just because it was a random pick, I love. Thank you. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Thanks. We're on the book to net loads. Yes. I like when I find a random book that I've not heard anyone talk about. 
Butchered just... it and spreads, man. Never have so <laughs> many words that I've been so opposed to being said in this library. Yeah. I I realised last haul that I actually hadn't picked up many things blind yeah. in a really long time. Yeah. And actually, one of my next ones that I'm going to show is one of those. Yeah. I saw it and I was like, I'm just going to take a chance. Yeah. It might be trash. It may be trash. I'll just, I'm just going to do it right now. The cover of this, I'm so sorry. Just, just in case you don't like it. So as the world does not belong to us by Natalia, wait, Natalia Garcia Fre oh, Fre Ferreira. Ferreira? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I am only interested right now in picking up new horror books by women. Okay. The only one that I've picked up by a man recently was an Amy recommendation that uh, we're going to buddy read, which mm -hmm. is fine. Because again, I feel like when people give you recommendations, yeah. it's okay. Like, I, I, there's less problematic stuff in this, but I really only want horror by women at this point. And this says, Secrets and revenge converge in this chilling tale from a breakout new Latin American voice. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I'm sold. It's got a spider on the front, and it's a woman, and it's a, it's a new Latin American voice, and you can you can give it to me. Yep. And then I read it, and you guys know how much I like bugs. I'm not going to show the cover again because I feel like it's probably like really upsetting some people. And essentially, this is about a person who goes back to their family home. Our main character going back doesn't really care about the house itself. Okay. They care about the things that live around the house. Uh, they okay. care about all of the creepy crawlies. And uh, the first line of this one, uh, in the in the vein of doing, thank you April, of doing yes. first lines, is, I don't believe my dead father is watching me, but his body is buried in this garden, what is left of my mother's garden, surrounded by slugs, camel spiders, earthworms, ants, beetles, and wood lice. And I was like, sold. sold. <laughs> and so here it is. It is in my library, and I'm excited. And you will probably never read it because it has a big ass spider on the yeah. front. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I, I will let you away with that one. Right, All right. what's next? So, talking of random non fiction, niche yes. interest. Saw this in Lighthouse. Yep. Um, and it's the Asexual Myths and, and Tales by Elizabeth Hopkinson. So, um, asexuality is something that I'm kind of exploring a lot more yep. and reading and looking at. And also, I teach young people. Yes, of course. So, yeah. for me, it's really important to to kind of read widely yes um and have things that i could potentially like whip out as recommendations yeah and be like try this um and these are as it kind of you would suggest it's kind of asexual stories on the back it just says once upon a time our ancestors told tales of asexuality symbolic stories that hint at other in identities a princess who grows a beard to escape marriage a knight who forsakes his wife's bed to become a werewolf a goddess with detachable parts a planet where everyone is asexual <laughs> Drawn from many times and places, retold and reimagined for the 21st century, Elizabeth Hopkinson's second book of myths and tales, I need to find another, the other one, Ooh. brings sexual, asexuality out of the closet and gives it the history it has been denied. So she's taking wow. like, so you've got things like The Little Mermaid, Snow White, uh, there's a whole load in here obviously. Yeah, and it's been yeah. crowdfunded, it's a Kickstarter book. Oh, that's lovely. So it's got all the names and stuff in the back. And I it's, yeah, that. it's literally like 150 pages, so. And it's that's from an indie epic. bookshop. And yes. Yeah, we Yay. stand Lighthouse, we do. We definitely supported the indie bookshop yesterday. Oh, we did. We did our part. We we, we <laughs> did we did a thing. That was the thing that we did. <laughs> and then that one. Yes. That was actually the one I meant to buy. Yeah, so... The, the <laughs> so, yeah. we're about to leave Lighthouse. Yeah. I was about... To, we were about to check out. Yeah. And, and I already had several books in my hands, which you can see in Jean's yeah. vlog. You can literally see me turn around mm -hmm. and I've got this massive stack already. And then as we left, I saw this out of the corner of my no, eye. No, 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 let's tell this the way that it's meant to be told. As we left, there was a very intense squeaky noise <laughs> And there's like a there's like a sort of stand in the mm. middle of the lighthouse that makes like a, a round path. Yeah. And Victoria was coming out one side and just <laughs> ran back in the just other side and it. disappeared. And we were like, Oh she's gone. <laughs> she's off. Yeah. Everybody had paid. Yeah. And then Victoria was like, hey. <laughs> Yeah, because I just saw it and I was like, oh. And this is That is a Learwife. Beautiful. How cover. beautiful is it? By J. R. Thorpe. Absolutely mm. stunning cover. Um and it's basically the story of King Lear's wife, who you don't get. Not that that's niche for you or anything, <laughs> Victoria. Not that Victoria mm. is obsessed with Shakespeare in any way. I know. English teacher, what can you do? Bad luck, baleful girl, mother of three small animals, now gone. I'm 55 years old. I'm Lear's wife. I am here. And it's like... 
Ooh, oh, that's our, so good. That's our banging tagline. So just on the inside, this I just read here's a tiny last bit. It says, giving unforgettable voice to a woman whose absence has been a tantalizing mystery. Lear Wife is a breathtaking novel of loss renewal and how history bleeds into the present. I'm just Yep. So the only one that you went to Edinburgh to get? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This was the only book that I came to get. In fairness, you got a very shiny heart back of it. Yes. That is very it's pretty. Very pretty. Very pretty. Um, yeah, so this is the only book I meant to buy. <laughs> um, and that's Gallant by V.E. Schwab. And I'm really excited for this, which means I should probably leave it for a bit. It's <laughs> too much pressure. V. Schwab is obviously an author who's written loads of books. Yep. And I have to be very careful which of their books I pick up because some of them are not going to be for me. Yes. But I loved Addie LaRue. Yep. And I've been told by people who have read Addie LaRue and whose book taste I trust yes. that if you liked that one, this is also. Yeah. But again, we're led to believe that like Victoria Schwab has very different audiences for. <gasps> yeah. Look how pretty that is. Oh. I mean, you know, just casually. Oh. Oh, Victoria. I know. And, Why yeah. Why did you do that? <laughs> just, that was so mean. <laughs> Why does it mean? Because no, so, I want it. <laughs> as well. Oh. You're dead to me. <laughs> I don't care, I have books. <laughs> <laughs> wow, how easily one can be replaced. That's, there you go, guys. Like, just like that, you can be dropped. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Olivia is missing three things. A mother, a father, and a voice. Oh, yeah, she's mute, that's why she doesn't speak. Oh, uh, okay. Her mother vanished all at once, her father by degrees, and her voice was a thing she never had to start with. And then she gets a letter from her uncle inviting her to Gallant, which oh, is the family home. Oh, okay. But in her mother's diary, it always that's says, don't go to Gallant, she decides to go because 16 year olds don't listen to their mothers. Yeah, or anybody else. Or anybody else. Um, and then when she gets there, there's no, they're like, that letter's from like years ago, uncle's dead. And so she stays on at this house. And I think there's like rules she has to follow. Yeah, Olivia's permitted to remain, but must follow two rules. Don't go out after dusk and always stay on the right side of the crumbling wall. But Gallant is a house of secrets, a house sitting in lonely vigil, a place where the ghouls are powerful. As Olivia searches for answers about her family, her past, she discovers a dark reflection of everything she's known, everything she knew, an ancient realm where ghosts take form and the dark master sits waiting for her. So, you know, that's what the... I feel like it's going to be like Stranger Things, kind of. So that's two things to get. Right, we'll just take <laughs> but that's why this is, the, this is the one that I wanted. Mm. <laughs> that was the one, this, was the, this was the one book that was going to be my, like, Edinburgh... <laughs> Yeah, all right. <laughs> Don't do the stack of shame. <laughs> I needed all of my boobs to do that. I needed all of the boob space. Like, it doesn't even fit in. But this is what we came for. You came for me. Oh, well, yeah. The boobs were just a pair. Oh, my God. What I meant to say, if you let me finish, this was going to be my Edinburgh, like, souvenir. But now I have all of these. Yes, Mum. That, that's very satisfyingly like, almost covers you, so please continue. <laughs> okay, so we were actually about to leave Golden Hair and I, shock and horror, had not actually found a book. And then very much like you did mm. uh, with Lear's Wife, I was standing <laughs> near the till listening to Jean talk about her PhD and how much she hated it. <laughs> and was like, mm. hello, lover. <laughs> I spotted this one, which, oh, this yeah. one's been on my wish list for a while. Um, so it's got a tiny, tiny little blurb, so I'll just read it. Uh, the folklore that has shaped our dominant culture teems with frightening female creatures. In our language, in our stories, many written by men, we underline the idea that women who step out of bounds, who are angry or greedy or ambitious, who are overtly sexual or not sexy enough, aren't just outside the norm. This sounds very, this sounds, like, yeah. boring, girls. Yeah. I'm liking this. Yeah. They're unnatural, morally deformed, monstrous. But maybe the traits we've been told make us dangerous and undesirable are actually our greatest strengths. Yes. Yes. And so I, ooh, mm. I'm so excited. This also has absolutely stunning illustrations oh. in it. I might need to, oh, damn it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, you're um, not though. But, oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> this, this, is, this is what pulled me in. So I flipped to this because, of course, I saw this illustration. I stopped, so I started reading. And it said, of all the things I miss about the early internet, the quietness of it, the way Nazis mostly stayed out of the public discourse. <laughs> and I was like, okay, sold. You read that bit to me and I was like, buy that. <laughs> yes, it needs to come home with me. <laughs> Women and Other Monsters is sure to become a feminist classic. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm buying it. Okay, okay. 
I'll take a picture of it on my phone for you <laughs> for tomorrow. Oh dear. I will. Look, look, it's a selfie. <laughs> there you go. So I did. No, no. I look far less guilty about this one than Victoria did. Because we didn't buy enough books yesterday. One more day. Yeah, one more day. Just one more day. Victoria was like, how do we do the outro? <laughs> and I'm like, how do I do any of my videos? I just wing it. <laughs> well, I think Harry's cooking us a very nice dinner, so we've got to go. There's reasons that I married Harry, <laughs> and they're all food related. So... That's, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, uh, we, we hope mm. that you enjoyed uh, coming along book shopping Let's with pretend that's us. All I bought. Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. The other, the other shame stack can stay over there. Yeah. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed our little book shopping experience. <laughs> you didn't do an experience. You did a lifestyle, bitch. Oh, but, like yeah. <laughs> this is a choice. I mean, choices we make. How often does that happen? You've got another stack over there. Yeah, but like, do not pretend this is all the books. I can see that one. <laughs> I can see it. Trust me, it's big. As always, if you have read any of the books that we have showed here today, and you would like to give us your opinions on them. I like me some opinions, so I leave like them opinions. in the comments below. Yes, Victoria is also a friend of the opinion, <laughs> so leave them all in the comments below. Um, if you have any books to recommend to us based yeah. on the books that we have picked up here or on our very niche special interests, yeah. then please also leave those in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the thumbs up because it really helps my channel and if you would like more of similar shenanigans, then uh, hit subscribe. We do this to ourselves frequently. <laughs> I'll speak to you soon, guys. Bye. Bye! And as usual, my usual rant at the end of this is uh, I have to put all of these away, but seeing as you're here, I don't have to put <laughs> anything away. All of this shit's going to stay on my desk. <laughs> but you have to fit them in a suitcase. I've got my tote bag. It's fine. We're fine. I left 11 kg of space Genuine in my suitcase <laughs> for this. Genuinely, though, do you know what I've just realised? Yeah. Uh, not, even, not even joking. Um the books that I've boxed up to send to you and haven't got around to are behind me on the floor. <laughs>